Okay, my friends, we are going to return to the days of yesterday year when I first discovered mud fossils and realized these things were not just statues and so forth. This is actually real biology that was petrified in some unknown manner and still unknown to me today. This is Statua del Gigante. And this, my friends, is the cartilage and which is a tendon really that runs down to the leg which is all covered with bloody red muddy bloody tissue down there this is the guy's arm and this shows the that is exactly the muscle pattern the bone pattern and so forth in the arm this was an, a living creature and this is what the body looks like that's exactly what we just looked at right there. That's exactly it. There's no difference whatsoever. 100% exactly identical. And nobody's going to put that inside of a statue. Now, they did some work to his head. They put in some rebar to try to fix it and all rusted away and fell apart. This has nothing to do with being repaired. That is a tendon. And that's his kneecap right there. Now, these other ones were also real, and I, like, look at this. Now, what is it? What the hell is that? Look at that thing. What is it? Well, it looks like some kind of sea monster mushroom <laughs> stuck on some guy that is saying, what is going on here, man? This is crazy. Now, and it is crazy, but listen to this. There was a guy called Ovid. And he wrote Metamorphosis, and he wrote that at the time of Julius Caesar. It was before Christ. Listen to what he had to say. All right, here it is right here. Metamorphosis, this is a narrative poem, they call them poems, from 8 CE, the Common Era. So that's before Christ was, you know, he was alive at that time, I guess. But anyway, this is all about Ovid, and... He has all these different books. Look at this, book 1 through 15. Now, it starts off, book 1, the creation, the ages of mankind, the flood, Deucalion, who was also known as Noah, and Pyra, his wife, Apollo, Daphne, Io, Phaeton. Then it goes on, or Calistro, and on and on and on, of all the, the heroes of the ancient times, the titans and so forth. And he starts everything with these words right here. He starts his whole metamorphosis with these words. In nova fert animus mutatus decere forma scopora. Well, what does that mean? It means... Metamorphosis is a transformation, the underlying theme amongst the episodes of metamorphosis. It's a transformation. Ovid raises its significance explicitly in the open lines of the poem, which is his works. In nova fert animus mutatus decere formas corpora, I intend to speak of forms changed into new entities. Those new entities include a great variety among the types of transformations that take place, human to innate objects like the Nile River, to constellations, to animals, from animals and ants and fungus and mushrooms to humans and hyenas and colorful pebbles. pebbles. I mean, this is just insane. It's absolutely insane. They could control matter and do anything they wanted with it, and they did just for fun. They turned these giants into stone in all of these crazy poses. Look at this guy. I mean, I don't know what's going on with that. I got to be honest with you. This is something very, very strange. <laughs> and look at this. Now he's strangling a, dra a dragon. That's the dragon's head right there that the water is coming out. They made a fountain out of him. And this is the Colossus del Apennino in Florence, Italy. Now they had some spots where they would, like um, the other one there uh, in France, Fontainebleau. 
Fontainebleau in France has like all kinds of crazy, crazy things. Anyway, I, I'm going to go to this video that I did five years ago. And because now there's all kinds of new information I have now about Apollodorus and about all of these different uh, stories that were told that, that solidify all this stuff. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on and on now. Now I have all the, the background information to support the things that I found and could not walk away from. So these are the things I found long ago. And I may have a different take on it back then, but I think it was pretty close to this now. Before we get started, don't forget now, you should read Apollodorus. He was, uh, I think, 180 B.C. It was certainly before, the, long before the Christ. He talks about the theogony, the birth of Zeus, the war of the Titans, the Olympian gods, the war of the giants and Typhon, Prometheus and Deucalion. Prometheus was apparently the father of Deucalion, who is Noah. And Prometheus, they say, may have actually created humankind after the war of the giants and so forth. I don't know. But this is very, very deep. And this is all the history written from the ancient... Um, mythology basically of the Greeks and she wrapped a stone in swaddling clothes and gave it to Kronos to swallow he, as if he were the newborn child he was swallowing all the children because they said that he would have a son that would, would grow up and overthrow him which is actually what happened when Zeus was full grown because she took him and hid him in the wilderness Zeus was full grown he took meet us the daughter of the ocean to help him and she gave Cronus a drug to swallow and it goes on this is this is the history there's Poseidon the Cyclopses Tartarus the Titans all in this one little thing Pluto Hades I mean this is some very 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 detailed stuff about and here is the Titans smote with a thunderbolt and hurled down to Tartarus uh, anyway, I'm going to go back to what the the actual physical evidence I had back, like I say, well, I was for years now, ten ten years or more, and but in the last five or six years, it's gotten pretty seriously detailed, and now it's gotten to the point where there's very very little that is unknown now, as long as it gets examined. So let's do some examining. What I care about is having people understand this is real, it's not silly, and there are very deep ramifications. It's not a monkey bone. All right. Now, this is a, a colossus somewhere. I'm not certain where, but it's a giant. And it, it was frozen by a Gorgon type of, of technology long ago. And it's written about by Ovid, Ovid they call him. But anyway, this is the the structure. Now you can see the pose. It's it's extraordinary these poses. Uh, the the they have looks of, of of wonder on their faces a lot of times. You see this architecture right here. You see that that's the blood running down through the arterial side. Whenever it's red or rusty color, that's the artery side. It has what's called FeO3 blood, oxygen with three ox, uh, um, iron oxide with the three oxygens. As it comes down, it forces itself through to the other side where um, it, it comes back as blue blood. In mud fossils, it will show up as black. Now, you see this stripe right here? You see that? It almost looks like somebody took a little pizza dough or something and wrapped it over there. That is tendon. It's clearly different from what you see over here. And I'm going to show you the, the uh, anatomy that will show this. But anyway, the blood runs down all the way. So this is what we got. These are real. This I certify by Mud Fossil University as a real ancient petrified creature that was done in instantaneously. And... Ovid has all of this, all of this is documented. So it's not something that, 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 that is it's just a guess. I'm saying, oh, he must have done that in Spain. No, he wrote all about this. He wrote that they did this to make lawn sculptures, literally. They did this to, and he posed these people and froze them instantaneously. That's what it says. All right, here's another one Aaron sent me. And, and um, it's, um, it's, 
there's the guy's artery as they ripped his arm off. And you can see the architecture of his arm and his artery bleeding all over the place. I mean, it's so unbelievable. I, I can't even imagine what was going on back then, but it's, it, 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 Ovid, Ovid wrote about this. They told, they told these guys, go up and hold this thing up, and then they froze them in place. It's just what happened, I, it, and it, it was written about. Now, down here, you, you see all of the, the blood flowing down. That's the part where I showed you before how the different types of muscle is darker here and separated and so forth. Now, there's the other foot. There's blood blowing out of that one. There's blood blowing out here. It's, it's just, it, it was alive. I, that's all there is to it. It was alive. Case closed. Okay, I'm, I went back and looked at the video that I did, and I, I got a little carried away with the transition metals, but I need people to understand the transition metals, and there they are. And these are the only reason you are alive and breathing oxygen and doing all the things that you do. And every bit of your anatomy requires to have a full complement of these metals. And it's not only these, there's, there's almost a hundred of them. They can, you contain iridium and uranium and all of that stuff is in your body and it has a function and it carries molecules around. Everyone has a special function and carries a certain specific molecule to do a certain specific job. Some of them may do your elbows. Seriously, it can be that specific. Some of them might do the... Uh, the, the, the nails on your on your body and some of them are the eyes and eyelashes the thin skin the thick skin the all the different things has to be built and structured and constructed from something from something and these are the ones that carry the things around to do the constructing and to feed you and to give you oxygen and to carry away the carbon dioxide. Without these, you're done. And if you are missing some of these or they are weak or they're in the wrong ratios, you become chronically ill. And the reason these things become in the right ratios is because your body processes the food that you take in correctly. And that requires bacteria because the bacteria creates something that's called enzymes. Enzymes are literally chemistry kits. They're chemistry sets. And in one type of bacteria will say, well, my job is to create something that's going to go out and harvest copper. And if that bacteria is killed by an antibiotic, which is frequently done, you will not have copper. And if you don't have copper, you may not be able to hear. You may not be able to see correctly. You may be itch all day long. You may have joint pains. But you will suffer from some chronic illness if you have too much of something or not enough of something and if you ingest things that are not natural things and they bind with these things that should be carrying something else then you are going to be possibly ill or if they come in and they attack things that you need and they break those molecules and you don't have them you are going to be sick so I, I recommended this for years now, and nobody will listen to me. I know I sound frustrated, and I am frustrated. I'm very frustrated, to be perfectly honest with you. I cannot believe the absolute... Anyway, I'm not going to go into this. I'm just going to continue on. The transition elements are absolutely required for your life and your maintenance and your health and to keep you away from the doctors. And if you don't, and it, all the foods you eat are, are these colors. They're just colors. The food you eat didn't come these colors because there's nothing there. It came in colors because you need these things in your body. And the earth knows that. Doctors don't know that. They have no clue about this. They don't care about this at all. I can't find anybody that has any care whatsoever about this. Now, I, I, it could be this is just incompetence, but I, I, I don't know. I have no idea why they don't care about what the natural system of your body is. And if you have these correct chemicals in you and these correct metals, they will deliver and pick up the things to make your body healthy. Case closed. Now, how do you get these things in your body to work correctly? Bacteria. All right, exactly identical to they use in the uh, waste treatment plants, heavy metals and so forth. They attach to the heavy metals. They know what they're doing. They know exactly what to do. Exactly what to do. 
But if you break them or if you go in there with antibiotics and kill them all, and these all go home and you're going to be healthy, you, you just send somebody home with a death sentence. You send them home to be chronically ill. That's a fact. If you don't have the right bacteria in your gut, which is what the antibiotics kills, goes right through us, they'll kill everything, it's all no good. These will never be able to do their job, and you will be sick. And that's why I get frustrated, because all we need is to have a, a national or a worldwide database that says, all right, here's what the, the, the metals are that are in your blood. All they need is a fluoroscope to take a blood drop, and bloop, 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 it says 27% iron, 6% this, and 1% of that, and blah, 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 blah. And there's 100 of them. There's 100 of them. Now, you match that to the bacteria that is in the fecal sample, so here you are, you got a blood drop, you got a little piece of poop. Between the two of them, that is your life. <laughs> that is your life. <laughs> your life is based on poop. <laughs> Bacteria. <laughs> I just thought about that. It's so funny. <laughs> I gotta take a break. <laughs> okay, my friends, I am sorry. That just struck me funny. My father used to tell me things that made me laugh about. <laughs> He used to say that everything you drink's been through the kidneys of a Chinaman at least once. <laughs> anyway, um, these kind of things strike me. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go into some other stuff. Um, at one point I say I'm going to wrap it up here. Well, I don't wrap it up. I just keep on going. So, anyway, I needed a good laugh. All right, thanks. Just keep watching. It's it's um it's really very interesting. And this is not a monkey bone. I keep saying that, and it is not. It is not just a curiosity. All right, I, you should really look deep into this. Go to Mud Fossil University, subscribe, and start learning. Because just go. Well, I, I say learning. Go look. If you see something, it turns you on. You think it's right. Well, maybe there's something there. Well, take a look. Nothing there, you will find nothing zero that is not supported with some material physical evidence. Or at least a very good story from the ancient texts, which I now believe are literally word for word fact. I mean, there's the things that they wrote which nobody could have expected, like a dragon and a leviathan and all these insane things that we've been finding at Mount Fossil University. They are actually true things that were written and they're true like this, the, the Gorgons. Somehow they petrified these people instantaneously. What is that all about? A lot of study is could be done, you know. I think the academics might enjoy this if they ever got into it and and, and let themselves devolve. <laughs> All right, see you later. All right, we'll finish it up with the um, the Colossus of Ap Apennino, uh, uh, um, Colossus of Apennine, I believe is how you pronounce it. And this was supposed to have been, have been done in the 1500s. Well, it wasn't done in the 1500s. This was long, long ago where the gods were here, and this was done by the gods, and they added a nest on the guy's back in the 1500s, and I'll show you that. Now, again, this is the kaolin clays, this is all the red bloody stuff that runs out. I can see all kinds of architecture on the skin, the blood running out of his legs. He had on some kind of a cape that was on him when he first originally was petrified. Now, let's uh, look at other pictures about him. All right, this is what it looks like. This is a, and all they did was they built this thing up on his back. That's all. And they put a little dragon nest up down there in the uh, 1500s. The rest of it is 100% real. I've checked that thing every single way that you can check it, and it is 100% correct. And Ovid wrote everything about this in Metamorphos. It was very, very clear. They, they talked about doing it. They, they froze 200 of them in one day, and one guy was swinging his sword, and the other guy turned into stone so quick that when he hit him, his sword went twang, and he was also frozen at the same time with a look on his face of amazement, is what it said. All right, I told you I would make it extremely clear how different things have different transition metals in them, and this is what I've been pointing out to for years now, and I don't even think anybody realizes what it is other than the people that have been paying attention to mud fossils. This is a heart.
It's an opalized heart. Now, opals form in blood. Blood is thick, thick, thick blood. It's Australia is slaughtered with blood. And the blood has transition metals in it. And when it's wet, these the, all of the body tissue, its natural condition is in wetness, is to pass things in and out. It loves to move things in and out. It's called carboxylation. And it's carboxylation of transition metal elements. Every time you see a color, it's a transition metal. Every time you see it clearly delineated in these forms, it means that that particular type of tissue needs a certain type of metal to do its job. This might be vanadium, it might be copper, it might be whatever it is. There's a hundred different transition metals. There's even iridium and uranium are transition metals, and they are in your body. And they do certain jobs. And the jobs they do are critical, and they just don't understand that either. They think they're just rattling around in your body. Well, they are not. They grab onto molecules up in your heart. They bring them down to your your uh, legs and our extremities and your whole body, and they drop them off. And as that pH changes, they grab onto a molecule to take back up to the heart to add another oxygen to it. Simple as that. It's the pH change that causes transition metals to handshake and release. Simple as that. And if you don't have them, you're sick. And if you don't have them in the right quantities, you're sick. And if you can't get them and process them by bacteria in your body, you're sick. It's called chronic illness. So I throw all these things in. I can't help myself. That's what I do. But let's go back to the, uh, <laughs> the giants. By the way, I, 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 I don't want to beat this thing to death. But I've been trying to get some doctor to pay attention. There's not a single one will. All you need to do, because you, I can tell you right now, these tissues have to have exact type of chemistry. You are nothing but a chemistry set. And if you don't have the right transition metals, you're going to be sick. All they need to do, all they need to do is to take a blood sample with a fluoroscope reading to find out the percentages and what blood metals are in your body. And then they match that up to a database of the average and people that don't have any symptoms and then they would look at the bacteria that's your body from a fecal sample between those two in a database and everybody went in and did that before long they would find out what bacteria was bad and what metal it deprived or would not remove from you and therefore the type of bacteria that was bad in you because it could, they create a, what they call an enzyme. The enzyme creates the metal. And if you don't have the metal, you cannot drag the things around in your body for your fingernails and your ears and your eyes and your toenails. and All the things have different chemistry. And all of those, those different transition metals have a different chemical signature handshake. All right, I don't mean to get off on these tangents, but nobody ever listens to this stuff. They look at all these pictures, and oh, look at these giants, look at this and that. Well, there's so much more to this. In academia, it just treats it like I'm an idiot. This is not silly. You know, it's time to stop wasting the time with this. I'm not going to live forever. I mean, I want to watch it. I know I'm not important. It's not me. But I want to watch now, something else I don't understand is this is not basalt. It is, it's a, a Crete left over after crushing stone to take out the gold. And what's left is a mineral concrete. It's just like concrete. And they must have added some kind of fuser to this. This is a, a mold. And the mold was here. And this, a giant, that's a giant's hand. Just like this, I've, I made a mold, it's identical. He was forcing this down into the mold. He went out to have a couple set of Vesa, came back, it was solid. Well, maybe more than a couple. 